And, and we're live. Welcome to Real Hospitality. Today, I have brought on an inventor, an innovator, somebody who had, looks just looks at things differently. And the product that Mark Wilson has invented is the coolest thing since sliced bread and, and, and the coolest thing to slice bread in 500 years. <laughs> Mark Wilson of Curveware. How are you today, my friend? I'm doing great. It's wonderful to be here. Thank you so much. Oh, thanks for coming on. The what you have, I think, is is really the the evolution of of the way that things are going to move forward. And you and I have had this conversation about you know how how can you make things um, so that you can make them more sanitary in restaurants. You can um, you know function with them so much better. I mean, if people don't know what Curveware is already. Let's let's show them and talk about it uh, a bit because it's it's fantastically designed and I love to I love the story of where you got the idea. Uh, yeah, well, you know, I tell you, I I, I embarked on this uh, journey almost uh, uh, by accident, and um, and I just got this idea of of researching and learning about the development of fork, spoon, and knife. I was living in Florence, Italy, and that's basically where the first table was set as we know it today. That was about 500 years ago by Catherine de' Medici, who married the King of France. She goes to Paris, they're eating with their hands. She goes back to Florence and gets her Russian flatware and uh, brought a bunch of chefs back to Paris as well. And, yeah. and if you look at flatware from that time until today, you see that about the only change there has been has been pattern variations. And the reason for this is because the technology never existed to do complex forms until relatively recently. Right. So they were silver and they could sit there and bang them out and they worked with silver rods and things that were straight. But you know, as I began looking at this, especially when I looked at the industry, identified some really serious problems. And it seems that the biggest problems in the food service industry are related to this fork in terms of turning tables, uh, getting them clean, which is very difficult. Right. Uh, afterwards, they have to wipe them and polish them. And, um, you know, they nest. Nesting is like one of the biggest problems that's never been solved until what we came up with. So the first thing, the, the concept here with this fork was, you know, can you make a utensil significantly more comfortable? Right. Okay. If it's not significantly more comfortable, then why do it? So right. uh, I had a background in ergonomic design, was working as a designer in Florence. And so I looked at the hand, you know, like in the relaxed position. Right. And if you take it in the relaxed position, this shape just goes right in there. You, you just touch it underneath. And I think you can see the hand is very relaxed. Yeah. And now The same thing is true if you're scooping. So, you know, you would hold a regular fork scooping like this. Right. And uh, I guess one of my five seconds of fame is an ergonomist saw this and he reckon, uh, recommended it to the Smithsonian's uh, Cooper Hewitt National Design Museum because they were doing an exhibit related to ergonomic design. And he was saying, what makes this a great ergonomic instrument is that it's intuitive. So you might look at this and go, how is this intuitive? Well, right. it's intuitive when there's food in front of you because you would pick it up like this, but you'll see people move their thumb up and their hand go like this. And the reason for this is that the body instinctively seeks out comfort. Right. So uh, the vast majority of the people do this. And then the others that are a little hesitant, they just glance to the left and right, see other people doing it. And in the dining environment, everybody's on board in, in just a matter of seconds. And uh, I, I'm so fussy about uh, about flatware in general when I'm even at home, I have my we have different forks and knives in the drawer and stuff like that. But I have my favorite ones and I refuse to eat the other eat with the other ones. Even if my favorite ones are dirty, I'll go and wash it off and go back. And you talk about comfort. It's it, 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 that's a that's a hospitality thing, right? That's a, a cultural thing for us in, in in having that comfort food and that comfort meal. Yep. And that comes from balance. And, you know, people say, well, you know, why does it look exactly like this? Well, we actually did 20 prototypes and, and a good design looks like something that almost just looks like it's a quick sketch. 
uh, almost as if it was just a capricious thing, you know? Right. And, and yet this is the result of like 20 prototypes. And, and it's the weight in the dis uh, is distributed in such a way that there's a real natural balance. And, and you can see this when people are eating with them. Right. And it's really funny because, of course, when I came up with the first prototypes from, we went from we like wood, a bunch of wooden ones and plastic. And then there was the first stainless steel prototypes. And then we went into the dining environment and you'd see people pick them up. And then, you know, in, in just a few seconds, they're doing this and you'll just, you'll see this look on their face and it's like the light bulb went off. Right. And then it's like, wow, this is better. So we did focus uh, group testing where we gave them to a bunch of people who took them home for a week. And they just, we told them, look, you got to use them for breakfast, lunch, and dinner all the time. After a week, they filled out a survey. And it was very interesting because we heard a, um, in the comments section something we'd never thought of when we said, so what do you think of flatware? And they said, well, flatware now feels awkward. It's like a stick with a head on it. Right. And we heard a number of people use this expression, a stick with a head on it. And I'd never thought of that. Uh, but when you think of flatware, you have a straight piece of metal, right. and a little jagged edge to cut with, or a straight piece, piece of metal with a rounded cup for a spoon. Right. And, and it's again, it's because the technology was limited and never made it possible to do something as comfortable, for example, as this knife. This knife on a steak goes through a steak better than probably any steak knife we'd use. And it's because, uh, okay, I, I'm out of view here, but if, if you could see me down at the table level, you get um, all the weight comes down the shoulder and the arm. Right. And so you're, not, you're not pushing on a back of a piece of metal where you get that, you know, indentation in your finger. I was just thinking that as you're saying it. Yeah. And uh, so, you know, comfort was critical. It was like, look, you know, we have some ideas to solve the problems in the back of the house. But if we don't know that we're getting, you know, complete buy-in or very, very close to it, where maybe one or two people out of a hundred for a variety of reasons ask for flatware and that's, that's no big deal. Right. Uh, it's like, look, if we don't know that, then there's no point in digging into the back of the house. Right. And then once we knew that, we went into the back of the house and anybody watching could go to the Curveware website and see the racks we developed. Yeah. And, uh, and of course, that's what's really serious to the industry, especially now that labor is such a big problem. Well, that's the cool thing too. When, we, when, when you first told me about the way that the, the, way that the racks work and they wash and the, and the hygienic benefit of them, it, I, I just went, why, why are we? Why are we still messing around with flatware? Well, I, I think the labor is the big thing because, uh, you know, they come out of a dishwasher and about 35, 40 seconds later, uh, they're spot free. They're, they're dry, they're spot free. And, um, and just about three weeks ago, we went to a surf safe, uh, surf safe lab yeah. and they took those health department approved temperature tags and they put them all over the utensils. And it proved that on the inside, the outside, top, bottom, throughout the rack, every utensil reached the temperature to kill all pathogens. That's awesome. So I, I think the industry standards, it's like log five sanitized, which means if there's anything left on it, it's not going to hurt you. It's deader than dead. And uh, so, you know, we... we when they're, when they're in the dishwasher, though, too, they hang, right? There's a... a yeah, exactly. The water grips off. Yeah. So, see, so two things happen. Um, one, you know, if it's a high-end restaurant, they've got really nice silverware. Uh, the chemicals, they take their toll on the utensils, not to mention I've gone to a lot of fine dining restaurants and you pick them up and they're all scratched up. And that's because 85% uh, of restaurants just dump their flatware on a flat rack. Right. So they bang each other and do all that kind of stuff. Right. Ours are hanging and are perfectly separated. And of course we can wash, you know, many times more. We can wash 180 utensils. In some instances, with the double high hopper door on the dishwasher, yeah. we can wash 360 and every utensil comes out sterile. So in, the hot in utensil one go? in one go, in one go. You can't, that, you can't fit that many in a, in a flat rack. Well, we put two side by side. And again, if the, the hopper door is high enough, yeah. you can also stack them too high. But 
probably 95%, I don't know, it's a guess, of the restaurants in the U.S. with the Hobart or Champion, right. just as a regular hopper door, so we can get 180 in there. Right. And so when the utensils, the really hot utensils, hit the cold air, the water runs off, if everything's calibrated properly, and then whatever's left evaporates because right. of the heat and the cold air. And right. so you look at them and they're done. I mean, dishwashers love this because they're they're done. You know? Right. There's just you could just take it right there and put it on a table. So they don't have and you don't have to have servers assistants or, or porters polishing none of that. No. Spending spending all that time doing that. And the but, other thing is you can get them off the table in the kitchen and back out that instead of having to buy like multiples of flatware. Yeah. Uh, compared to the number of seats you have. So 100 seats, three, 400 uh, settings of flatware. Right. 100 seats, you can have 125, maybe 150, depending on how how many times you're turning your tables. Yeah. And, uh, and, and that's all you need, but probably half or less than half the inventory. You know, it's funny. I, I'm, I'm always amazed at every once in a while, and, 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 and I guess it's been 500 years, somebody comes along and looks at these things differently and goes, no, no. This is a way better idea than what you people are doing. <laughs> yeah, we've won a lot of people over. I remember when I had the first prototypes, I got a lot of press in the early years while developing this. And there was some restaurateur who was, I don't know, I never met him. He was kind of, he was trashing me. Mm -hmm. And I finally ran into him in a place we both attended very, pretty frequently. And I cornered him and I gave him like um, four settings of curve work for he and his wife and for him and his wife and his two daughters. And a few months later, he called me up late at night and says, man, this stuff is better than flatware in every regard. Like, you know, Bob, you know, is it you? And <laughs> so what changed your mind? And then that's where we did a lot of testing and learned some just some great things. So you, I, I, we, we just quickly had this conversation this morning and, and it's funny, we, all, we always get into these conversations before the show, which, which, which I, I always want to make sure they get on the show because they're good. But the, when, we're, when you were talking about the, the, the comfort and functionality and uh, the difference between round handles and the, and the, and the handles, uh, the door handles. Oh, the lever handle and the round doorknob. Yeah, I was working in Florence, Italy as a designer. And, you know, it was, you know, kind of late in the evening, a bunch of designers sitting around drinking grappa. And uh, I was telling them how, you know, look, if you want to come up with a radical innovation, something that's really different, it better be rooted in really significant, you know, uh, addressing really important manufacturing concerns, you know, best materials, best pricing, you know, all that kind of stuff. And I said, and, and you better be raising the standards for the user. And it better be something they can experience quickly. And then preferably you're going to get all that word of mouth marketing because they're going to, you know, pick this thing up and then they're going to have that aha experience and then they're going to tell others. And in fact, when we tested in some restaurants, uh, that happened. Uh, one of the general managers said, hey, Wilson, you know, this stuff is driving covers. I didn't know what that meant, you know. He said, well, they're coming over from the resorts because there are a bunch of really high-end restaurants in this area. So these tourists could eat anywhere and the right. food was great everywhere. But they, you know, they wanted a unique experience. I think they also like wanted bragging rights. So they were walking in the door saying, is this the place with those unusual utensils? And you know, I don't know if he was happy or not to hear that utensils were bringing him in the door, but I think, you know, business right. people, you know, like probably anything that increases their business. Right. And uh, now we never measured that. That is something I'd like to measure. And, uh, but you know, we, we tested some things at some pop-up dinners where um, we developed some sound bites, some messaging. Because if, you know, if somebody comes into a restaurant and they see these things and they've never seen them, it's a good idea if there's like just a little sound bite that lets them know and right. gives them a good reason to say, yeah, sure, I'll do this. And, uh, and the reality is, I think the National Restaurant Association said you can wash 40 pieces of flatware in a single pass with acceptable results. Right. Well, we wash 180, so you do the math. Yeah. That's a 78% reduction in water, gas, chemicals, and electricity. Now, water, as everybody listening, is not the big expense. Labor's a big deal. Sure. Very big deal. Maybe the biggest. Chemical, too. E energy's more important. Uh, but when we tested various sound bites and we had a little table card now some fine dining places won't use that but they'll have a little menu insert and it said you know in the seconds it takes you to discover the most comfortable utensils in the world you'll be helping us save four hundred and eleven thousand 
560 gallons of water this year. And that was based upon the average restaurant wow. in the US. And you know, that, that resonates with people. And if it's uh, the right environment, and you know, our niche for the launch is like a Morgan or a, or a Kimpton, you know, kind of lifestyle restaurant, then, then those people are all in because it really kind of supports their vision of, of uh, you know, adopting sustainable products, you know, going to, to hotels that are big on sustainability. So, you know, stories really help drive marketing, good stories. What a good time to really let people know about what you're doing in this, in this way right now, because organizations are looking to pivot in a positive way and, and how they're not only seen by their guests, but how they are uh, having to, having to look at things differently, like saving energy, like saving money, like having something different, like something that is, that is proven to be a hundred percent hygienic, especially now. Yep. You know, my, uh, my son, my oldest son knows a lot about this. He worked his way through a very prestigious university, uh, bouncing and working in the back of the house. And <laughs> he was talking to some friends. He said, you know, as things open back up again, people are doing multiple things. Yeah. So, you know, simplifying labor is not a small thing, wow. making it really easy. And you, and you, this is, you know, the rack was designed based upon talking to these dishwashers, you want to give them something that they want to do, right? Yeah. Because if you give them something that they reject, as great as it may be, it isn't going to get used and you don't They're get it. In the garbage. That, that's right. So, uh, you know, I, I learned from a, a, a brilliant, brilliant architect in, in Florence, Italy, considered maybe one of the most important of the last century. He said, when you're designing a product, because architects in Italy design products, boats, furniture, car interiors. He said, you want to talk to every single person that's going to touch that thing. Everyone, even people that nobody would consider worth, worth their while to talk to. And you just would be surprised the ideas that you get. And so when I went to the dishwasher and said, listen, what would you like to do? What are your problems? You know, you want to eliminate uh, pre-soaking, you know? You want to not have to worry about... Um, you know, again, wiping and wrapping and all that down, you know, downstream work. Right. And uh, and they give you the ideas to enable you to come up with a creative solution. That's awesome. And I mean, you are uh, you've you've been working with this for several years, and uh, I mean, I, I'm I'm blown away that it's uh, that this was the first time that I was seeing it recently when we first started talking about it. And, I, and ever since I've been thinking about applications for it, I, I just, I think now is really the right time for the world to yeah. know. Yeah, I think so too. You know, the, the hygiene solution came when I learned about E. coli and salmonella. I was yeah. really fortunate to get some time of a, a past, uh, an NRA president many years ago. And, uh, and he was telling me, you know, uh, when he first saw the rack, he said, you don't know what you have there. You know, I said, well, I think I do. I designed it. He goes, no, you don't. And so he started telling me about the hygiene problem. He said, listen, go to uh, this, uh, I won't mention the brand name, but it was a, a restaurant big on environmentalism and things. And he said, leave the knife alone, but lift a spoon and a fork and take it to a lab. He said, I guarantee you'll find something on it. Might not be E. coli. Could be, but he said, probably won't be. But he says, I guarantee you'll find something on it. And uh, so the thing is, is, you know, when I first designed this, uh, I was doing other things. It wasn't my day job. As I worked as an architect and business development advisor and industrial designer. And then a lot of the investors that invested in this also invested in some surgical instruments I was developing. And honestly, 15 to 20 years ago, people didn't care that much about saving water and energy. Right. And uh, so we kind of just sold direct, you know, left up a website. People bought it directly that we're looking for something different. And then uh, my wife and then a stockholder said, you know, we, we think that you're just way ahead of your time. And, and these issues are big now and they're actually driving decision making. So as you pointed out before, you want to focus on the positive. I think as a lot of these restaurants are reopening, you know, some people that are like maybe a little driven 
or controlled by fear. And that's certainly understandable given that it's just crushed so many people. It just, so many operators are not going to be able to come back. Right. But if you can put a positive spin on things and, uh, you know, we'll certainly help any restaurateurs that they want to learn more. They talk to me and then we'll talk to their local press and television. It's very easy. It's actually very easy to get television to come out to a restaurant that puts these on the tables. Because as you said before, you know, the stuff you hold in your hand to put food in your mouth hasn't changed in 500 years. Right. So they're always looking for great human interest stories. And that really drives business. Great. I think, you know, it's, it's not an easy thing to talk about because uh, according to consumer reports, the dirty fork is the number one complaint. But how can an operator say, you know, the existing standard that we have makes it difficult to get perfect results. Nobody wants to hear that. <laughs> and who, who would ever, you know, mention that? Right. But we do think it's possible to say, listen, you know, we do things in the back of the house to the highest standards, but we're always looking for innovations right. that enable us to make uh, – to make doing this much easier. And another analogy, I think, between curveware and flatware is like the tire. You know, for, for eons, when I was a little kid, we had tires with tubes in them. Right. And when you went on vacation, you, you, you were guaranteed to change it, either coming or going. Right. And, and people just, that's the way that it is. Exactly. But you talk to some like millennial and they go, well, what do you mean? You know, I've been driving for, you know, eight, 10 years. I never changed a tire. What's that, you know? Yeah. But when you think of the business implications, imagine you're a trucking company, no downtime, no accidents. Uh, I mean, the tires look the same from the outside. People go, I don't see any difference. Now, okay, the difference between curve and flat is pretty noticeable. Right. But all those industry advantages and even the fact that, you know, it's, it is very cool to see people experience a level of comfort and then realize, wow, you know, I never thought of it, but flatware actually isn't that comfortable. And I mean, who hasn't had, you know, peas spill off a fork? Even a person with, you know, perfect hands, right? Ooh. You get them and you balance them. And a lot of that has to do with the fact that this is not as stable as that. That's very stable. And, uh, you know, anybody that does it, you know, verifies it for themselves. Absolutely. And, and it, we, we, we've we spoken about this. I mean, that's not this isn't specifically what Curve is designed for, but it certainly helps if you if you have trouble with your hands, if you're if your hands are arthritic or if you are uh, oh, if you have trouble handling something that's that, that, that's just a, 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 a pokey thing on the end of a stick. You know, it's, it's funny because when I first started working on the design, I only had one concern. I said, I want these things to be extremely comfortable yeah. and effortless. Comfort and effortlessness or ease of use are really not the same thing. And I discovered this when, you know, we're eating in a restaurant and then somebody holding them said, you know, um, you know, I, I have a little bit of tremor. I think they were taking antidepressants, which is like the number one side effect of the 50 million people on them in the US is a little bit of a tremor. They went like this and it stopped. And so, you know, later on, I called up this, this doctor and said, you know, what, what the heck just happened? You know, what happened? And he said, well, you know, this fine motor opposing action kind of in, increases the tremor. This gross motor, and these were all new terms to me, kind of open position uh, just arrests it immediately. And it's true that for people with arthritis or, or even carpal tunnel, I had somebody call me up with that too. They said, you know, when you're holding a regular utensil, let's say this was a, a regular utensil where we're straight. When you push here, you're putting stress there. Right. And But when your entire hand is supported, there, there's none of that. And so, you know, I go back to the idea of my original analogy before I was even picked up a pencil. I was thinking of the lever handle and the round doorknob, but I was thinking of the lever handle in terms of comfort. But, you know, if you think about it, that, that's where ease of use comes in because if you've got books in your arms, yeah. you can go up to that door and bump it with your knee or your elbow and get through it. Right. You know, if you're in a dorm room in college and somebody puts Vaseline on that round doorknob, you're screwed, you know? So I realized that, you know, th there, there is, 
I, I do believe, and others say the same thing, that the, I think 40 million Americans with arthritis that affect the hands and I think it's a similar number with carpal tunnel and those with tremor. I think the word will just get around to say, hey, look, these, these things are ridiculously easy and comfortable to use. And so I think what will happen is they'll, uh, it'll uh, create, it'll be a differentiator that'll increase market share for those operators. Absolutely. And, uh, you know, the Heavenly Bed did it for Starwood. And, and something really bizarre is, you know, again, it's a totally different industry, but Pampers and Huggies, right? Diapers. Yeah. I think it was Huggies that put little bears on the little tabs to stretch the tape. Yeah. Well, that created like a, you know, 3.2% market share swing. They sell mind numbing amounts of diapers every month and a, and a shift, an increase of 3.2, you know, percent is also a down percentage for your competitor when I think between Kimberly Clark and Procter and Gamble, they own like maybe 80, 85% of the market. So it, it turns into millions of dollars, a silly little thing like those bears, which they had good patents on. So, right. you know, it's not a silly little thing. And, you know, we want to work with these restaurant and hotel partners that we gain to help them like maximize, tell the story, right. Sure. And, um, so that it'll really benefit them. And, uh, and benefit the diners, I mean, the, the guests. And uh, I mean, I know I, I've even spoken with uh, with my good friend, uh, Chef Dwayne Keller, who is a mutual friend of ours yeah. about your product and uh, and about and about your company. And uh, he's, he swears by him, loves him. Yeah, Love, absolutely loves him. And, and uh, you know, Chef Keller is a, is is one of the most respected uh, chefs in the world uh, yeah, you know, like in North America. And uh, that's yeah. a that that. That, that that's a hell of a shout out from uh, from from him. Yeah, it meant a great deal to me. Uh, it was cool when I first met with him. You know, he was kind of looking at me sideways, like. <laughs> and then I put them in his hand, and I think he you know called him the sous chef. He goes, "Listen, bring me a steak," and he sat down. I pulled out my iPhone. I got some pictures somewhere where he's holding them and cutting cutting with it. And again, it's that aha moment, you know. And, uh, and of course, that leads to the word of mouth marketing. Absolutely, and, and it Absolutely. really, it really works great for everybody. So, so in order to get Curveware, mm -hmm. uh, of course, people are going to need to contact you. Um, uh, can we? Can they just go ahead and do it through the website? Or sure, there's uh, email on the website. They can. I think there's a phone number there too. They can uh, uh, call me. Uh, we, we do this. I think this would be interesting to. Uh, yep, interesting. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we, we we do a lease to own. Okay. Nobody else on the planet does lease to own with eating utensils. It has a whole series of advantages. First, you get tax write offs. They're not insignificant. Secondly, um, the the right restaurant is going to get so much savings in water, gas, chemicals, electricity, and labor. Plus, you know, I remember that first guy who was a non-believer who became a big believer when we tested in his restaurant. It was a Monday. I said, look, when we've done dining events, people have asked where they can buy them. You know, if they ask, why don't you sell it to them? And he he just blew me off like, well, we're not in the retail business. Right. And by Thursday, we had sold nine settings. People just called us up on the phone and said, uh, you know, we use them at this restaurant. They're really cool. Can we order them? Took their credit card, shipped it where they wanted. And then that Friday morning, the GM called me. He said, so what's this wholesale for? So with the wholesale price that they can acquire them at and the retail yeah. price they sell them for, it, it'd probably be like six or seven times what their lease payment's going to be. Wow. So if between savings and sales, you've got a net positive of, let's say, $2,2500 and you have a three or $350 lease payment at the end of the month, right. you've already saved, you know, like, I don't know, seven, eight times or before you have to make that first payment. Yeah. And the reason that's so important that I looked for that lease payment is some of the guys that collaborated with me early on said, look, you know, two years ago, I just got to all this new inventory. What am I going to do with that? You know? Right. And uh, can you work out some financing? When I worked out this financing, you know, they realized, wow, I can just sell this for scrap because the day curver gets in here, uh, that that bleeder, that invisible bleeder is going to be gone. Right. 
because no one thinks of it. If, if everybody in the world just absorbs the, the sewer water they pay for, you know, that's something that most people don't know, right? You gotta pay for the water going down the drain and all these things add up. And when you eliminate all of them, uh, so then again, at the end of the two or three year lease, whichever they want, they pay a dollar and they own it. Now they also have the option to say, hey, we'd like to get all new inventory and ship back the old and they could just continue the lease. Uh, we really don't know what's going to happen because we haven't had like high volume use in a restaurant for two or three years. Right. But because they don't bang the way flatware does, we think there's a really good chance. We've done a lot of events, a lot of inventory. And be because the rack doesn't allow them to scratch each other, they they still look great. And, uh, so. Well, I'm, uh, uh, this is, a, again, this is a, a pivotal moment in uh, hospitality industry to be looking at products. Well, let me give you the uh, new number. That's that's not a good number. Okay. We got to that number. That's a that's a I don't know how that number got there, but it's three three three. Okay. Six four five five. Okay. So three three three, six four five five. Info curve where works great, and you can even just shoot me a direct email at mark at curveware.com if you like. We can find Mark on LinkedIn as well. Yep. And if you shoot me an email at mark at curveware.com, just mention uh, uh, Jason. That'd be great. And uh, Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. And if you're watching the show on LinkedIn or YouTube or whatever platform you happen to be watching it on, whether you're watching the live show right now or if you're watching the after show in the, in the post, uh, feel free to put uh, a question up there on anything that you might have. We'll we will certainly forward it to Mark. Uh, Mark will be be keeping tabs on that too. So if you're looking to get interested in having uh, curveware in your restaurant, or your hotel, or your or your uh, or your seniors' uh, residence, or your for catering, uh, then it's very easy to get a hold of or ask more questions. Uh, just put their put your comments in the thread below. Uh, or contact Mark directly at the numbers on the screen or on the email, et cetera, et cetera. Mark, one other thing is, you know, we can work it out so that, uh, because, you, you know, when someone talks about a radical innovation, it's, it's great if you can take like a test drive or a taste drive, I guess. So right. if someone says, hey, we have these regular staff meetings, we can arrange to ship product. It has to be secured, but, mm -hmm. you know, they... And if they decided they didn't want it, they'd have to ship it back. But we'll right. ship it to them, and uh, they can try it at, at, at uh, you know no cost or commitment. And uh, there's just nothing like seeing you know seven or eight of your staff or some other people using them. And uh, and we can even have a Zoom meeting during the uh, staff meeting, answer questions, and so that they feel absolutely comfortable about moving forward instead of just taking a a big leap, which could be you know. You, 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 sir, are, are a trendsetter, and uh, and it's been a long time coming. So, uh, five hundred years in the making. <laughs> <laughs> finally, well, finally, we have something new. Damn it! Well, you know, when I started thinking about this, I said, you know, it's kind of hard to buck five hundred years. But what I told those designers in that first conversation was, I said, uh, look at the Sony Walkman. Uh, up until the Sony Walkman was designed, uh, we all remember what transistor radios, I mean, older folks, what they were like. And I I predicted with these guys, because this was kind of, I was just talking about this. I said, I'll tell you what, by Christmas time, little old ladies with tennis shoes and shopping malls will be using these things. Why? Because the cost is phenomenal. The quality is great. The convenience is exceptional. So, you know, now that wasn't their niche market. That's not how they launched it. But, you know, that's true for all products. You know, of course, our niche is like the lifestyle, experiential dining environment because those people just embrace change and innovation. But then the word gets around about the benefits that, you know, even a Denny's, Denny's can uh, acquire. And in fact, places where they're turning tables a great deal, that getting them off the tables and in and out of the dishwasher is even more appreciated than a place that turns them once in an evening, you know. Oh, absolutely. And, and the place that turns them once in an evening is the one that has all sorts of guests that will it. buy lots of this stuff. And in a Denny's, you know, this is kind of priced, you know, beyond at the retail price for probably the most people that go to a Denny's, of course. So, well, the um, 
when you talk about the turnover on on just getting them through the dishwasher faster, I mean that that alone. Anybody who's managed a restaurant or worked in the back of the house, uh, even worked in the front of the house, and is waiting for for cutlery to come through the dishwasher, it's. It, 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 I don't know if I've ever worked in a restaurant over thirty years that that hasn't been a problem. You know, I, I think I told you I learned it uh, by accident when uh, one of our test sites had 100 seats. I think they turned tables one and a half times. Uh, so they had 150 settings of curveware, six racks. Uh, it holds 30. A rack holds 30 sets or 90 pieces. But 25 makes it just faster to get them on and off. Sure. And I walked into the kitchen. I said, boy, you've, you've never used any of those over there because I don't need to. Because you see those, just ran them in. They just came out. They're ready to go back on a table. That's awesome. And, and uh, yeah, it was. It's gratifying. You know, I like solving real problems for operators. You know, they've got. It, it's a really tough business where every penny is counted, and efficiencies are everything. So, you know, uh, making their lives easier means more to me than you know getting into some design museum. Oh, uh, it, it, like I said, what you've what you've got is is really a benefit to operators. It's really a benefit to the to to labor. And again, you know, when we're like you say, we're talking environmental. And and, and again, right now, because we're uh, I, I, even in Calgary, where I am, I mean, we're finally opening restaurants uh, full on on Friday. But there are provinces and states in Canada that they they haven't even started the process of, of right. phase one, and in the U.S. Uh, there's lots of states that that haven't gone and, and done the, the the phase one thing yet, or they're they're concerned about public perception as to whether or not it's safe to eat there. Well, here's another issue. I, I spoke with someone at the Virginia uh, Restaurant and Travel Association. They came back from a meeting from the governor's office where they were talking about mandating use the use of disposables. I mean, a couple things. You know, landfills are going to like explode with plastic if that happens too. What kind of fine dining restaurant is going to be using like picnic wear, you know? So I contacted our one of our state delegates and I said, look, you know, we, we're certified, to, guaranteed to come out of a dishwasher, you know, perfectly sanitized. Now, what somebody does after they come out, you know, we have no control over. However, yeah. if you look at the website, you'll see that the racks have handles. And that's what anyone's going to grab. And then when you take them off, you grab them when they're hanging you know, by the tail, and then they can, of course, go into the pedestal, and, uh, you know, it, it takes, doesn't even take an explanation for someone to figure out how to do that. In the you show the pedestal again, Mark, just so, yeah, so sure. you can see. Like and, and actually, we have uh, other pedestals that are designed that we're going to start making that, um, if you go on our Instagram account, which is instagram.com forward slash curveware with no E in the middle, as you can see. And you can scroll down and you'll see we have like a, a triangular one. It's triangular and of course an ex extruded and you utensils remain horizontal. There's also on there, you'll see lots of pictures of how the tables can be set because right. when these things lie on their back, the heads don't touch the, uh, the linen also. So you, right. your linen stays clean. And then of course the restaurant guest is thinking about you know, it not touching and they're putting it in their mouth. Uh, so uh, it's important for event planners. It, it, it looks cool. It's just a just a, a really great different way to, dis, to, to display your table. It's really important when you do very large events because um, we did an event in Las Vegas. There were 400 people. And uh, I got there at eight in the morning because I'd never done an event that big and they were done. And th these were lined up on the tables uh, and you could stand at the end. And it was a long line and they were perfectly lined up. And the banquet manager told me they would still be there till just before noon when it opened, uh, messing around with the flatware. And I said, well, why is that? He says, well, there's no problem with the fork or the spoon but the knife floats. So everybody's bumping the tables when they're putting things on it. So he said, the last thing to do is kind of stand back and line it up because he said, guests come in and they look down and if things are kind of cattywampus, they notice it and it just looks bad. Right. So this goes in like a wine glass in a, in a second. And right. it's just really easy to do it with great precision. And, uh, that's a massive water savings. And then they collected them on racks using carts, 
And then in that instance at that Hilton, they had a conveyor belt system. So the racks just went on the conveyor belt, came out, you know, and then they were just taken off and they're dry and ready. And, go again. and then we have a cover that goes over it that protects them, you know, better than putting anything in a drawer. Yeah. And it breathes. So it keeps them dry and keeps them clean. And uh, I mean, there's just so many little things that people yeah. don't consider when reinventing something. For sure. But you want to look at every single operational issue to, uh, uh, we, we, which takes, you know, like uh, there, there's things that I thought were silly that I never heard of. Right. But one general manager called me up and said, wow, this is easier to clear tables before we put them on the racks in the, in the kitchen. I said, well, why is that? He said, because the plate has a little, you know, there's the circle, the outside, the circle, and it dips down. Yeah, he says, right. these things kind of anchor in so they never slide off. So, you know, knives touch on the ends. Anyway. Yeah, he says knives touch on the ends. And so when they're moving fast and trying to move a lot of plates, the knife's hitting the floor. And he right. says, like, I go, well, it's like, so what, you know? He goes, no, 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 no this is a so what, you know? This <laughs> is an issue. And so it actually is gratifying to see these little things that, you know, mean something to, uh, to, to staff. I'm looking forward to seeing them in every cafe and bistro and restaurant and hotel around the world. <laughs> Let's do it. We've got to make it happen. Absolutely. Absolutely. Mark, Thanks thank you so much for, your time today for coming on. Thank it's, you. Your, your product is so cool. I, I wanted to share it with everybody. And especially now uh, when we're looking at, again, uh, looking for, for new ideas and, and new ways of looking at the way we do things in the industry specifically about, again, and I've said this, I know 10 times in the show about hygiene, but again, that's the public perception that people are going to be talking about uh, in the restaurant industry in general. Right. But this is a, is a no brainer uh, move for operators that, that does nothing but benefit in every way. And if people are looking to contact Mark, we've uh, again, we've uh, got the contact information below here, phone number, email. Uh, you can go on the website and order directly, uh, or you can contact uh, and connect with, uh, with Mark on LinkedIn uh, and have a conversation about how Curveware can benefit your restaurant. Uh, thanks again, Mark. It's been awesome. Let's do this again. Thank you. It's really great. I look forward to it. Thanks so All much. Right. Be well. Thank you, Jason.